Hi guys, so in today's video I want to do a full presentation on how to set up a wall stab method aquarium. I've noticed on YouTube there isn't many uh, videos that go into it in depth and explain things in depth. There's videos but when I watch them I think well it's not exactly touching on the key things and I don't want to discuss it in too detailed a thing because a lot of the criticisms of the book as it goes into the science really deeply and it doesn't really touch on the key points that the hobbyist would need it, it goes too deep but before i start i just wanted to give a shout out to thank glenn from uh, gb shrimp he sent me a load of food from his shrimp uh, in a video where he where i was talking about my algae wafers possibly causing me water he offered to send me some so and he sent me some shrimp fry food there's the newborn and the there's a the newborn and there's the juvenile feed which i'm really excited to give them a crack um and there's his stickers he sent me for my fish room. So uh, if anyone else wants to send me stickers for my fish room, I'll be made up. But that's going to tie into the video actually nicely because I can talk about the fish foods or the shrimp foods and how it applies. But I wanted to thank him. I did want to do an unboxing video, but unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, my postman decided that it'd be a good idea to put the box in my green bin, which isn't a recycling bin. So it went in with nappy sacks and the box not like nappy so i couldn't exactly bring it in the house and so <laughs> it's scuffed me panic doing an unboxing video but let's get into the video anyway so this is my newly established wall stab method aquarium right now by definition the, the most simple definition i can give you for a wall stab method aquarium is it converts fish food into plants by nutrient cycling the term wallstab method is a misnomer it doesn't mean anything diana wallstad's book is a scientific description of how an ecosystem works there's only 10 pages in it that discuss setting up a tank so by definition what a wallstad method aquarium is is an aquarium we've set up with the sole aim on nutrient cycling and what that means is converting fish foods like Glenn sent me into plants. Just this is when you drop your food in the tank, bacteria in the soil breaks it down. So what happens is the when you feed your fish, the bacteria in the soil break the fish food down or the fish waste the eating fish food and they convert it into micro and macronutrients that the plants absorb as nutrients. Now, these bacteria live in the soil, but they live in oxygenated soil. Now, there's a current trend of people going around saying you don't want one inch of gravel, you want two inches of sand. But there's an inherent flaw with that. They're telling you you want anaerobic conditions. But the problem is, is as the oxygenated water goes down and it comes into contact with all the bacteria living in the gravel or the sand, those bacteria are using the oxygen, so by the time it gets down into the soil, the bacteria in the soil aren't getting any oxygen, so therefore they're living in anaerobic conditions. And then the chemical pro the processes that they go through to convert these nutrients changes. Instead of creating ammonium and stuff the plants can use, it starts creating nitrogen gas, nit nitrous oxide, it, create, it converts nitrate back to nitrite. So it's constantly putting a supply of nitrite into your aquarium. It also turns iron from ferrous iron, which the plants can use, to ferric iron, which plants won't use. And it'll bind hydrogen with the sulfates in our aquarium. And it'll convert them into hydrogen sulfide gas. So when we talk about soil, the soil is very important. It's not any soil. We use a mild pot and soil. Now the soil we use in the wall stab method is extremely important. It's organic pot and soil. Now what this contains is 30% sand. That adds structure that the plant roots can get into and hold and it, it just holds the structure together. And then we want 30% clay, red clay. That's what it's made up of. It, now, as I've discussed in the past, clay has got a plate-like structure. So the nutrients can bind 
to the clay and then the plant roots can basically take the nutrients from the clay and then we've got 30% organics. Now these are decomposed, broken down by the bacteria in the soil using oxygen and then it's bound with the it binds with the clay and the plant roots can use it. But what this is essentially is it's a massive store of micronutrients. So to understand the nutrients further, there's two types of nutrients, micronutrients and macronutrients. Now what you need to understand there is micronutrients are made up of nutrients that they're used in tiny amounts by the plant, like iron, manganese, stuff like that. And then we've got macronutrients, which is like, we need to come at this from the theory of Liebig's law of the minimum, which states that plants will absorb nutrients, um, but they can only grow to the limitation of which nutrient is in the least supply. So we need to make sure our plants or getting all the nutrients they need, the micronutrients and the macronutrients. Now to be any fertilizer you get should have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. Now they're always defined as your macronutrients. And we're not after them from the soil. So what we can see here is the crude protein in the food that Glenn sends us is 55% crude protein. Now we know that 55% of this packet is crude protein and what we know is that 16% of this crude protein is nitrogen which will convert to ammonium and we know that it's also about 3% phosphorus. Oh look there, so it says there, so 1.5% of this is phosphorus so half of this packet roughly is protein, crude protein, 3% of that is phosphorus so we can work out that 1.5% of this is phosphate. And we also know that from reading Diana Wallstead's book that the likes of your nitrogen and your, basically your macronutrients apart from phosphates, um, your plants prefer to eat them out, take them from the water column and not the soil. And your micronutrients come from the soil. So then we've got other nutrients, the likes of your magnesium, calcium, stuff like that, which are in the water. So every time we do a water change or we do a top up of water, we're adding new, basically your general hardness and your carbonate hardness. We're adding that back to the tank by the water changes or the top ups. But they can get low and Diana Wallstar talks about this in her book and she talks about dosing um adding a certain amount of magnesium, calcium and bicarbonates into your water. When you're replenishing the water, you can add these things, these minerals, these macronutrients they are. Now I'm gonna show demonstrate a way, a method I've come up with dosing these. I haven't come up with the method. I've literally just pinched it off marine keepers. So when I do it, I'm gonna make a video on it. Most freshwater fish keepers are going to say, look at him trying to create his own method. Whereas marine keepers and reefers, they're going to be like, well, obviously, we do it every day. So now we've explained that there's minerals, the mineral type things from the water are like the likes of magnesium, calcium, bicarbonates. Now, the limiting factor in any water stab method aquarium should be carbon. Diana Wallstad says in this in the book, which is CO2. It should be scarce, that should be the limiting factor. It shouldn't be light, it shouldn't be nutrients, it should always be CO2. And that's why she recommends doing a siesta period. So you have your lights on for four hours, off for four hours and back on for four hours to let that CO2 build back up. Now we understand that the soil is a reservoir of micronutrients. And it's also a home for the beneficial bacteria. We understand that the cap is to keep the soil beneath the cap you can't stop the water the oxygenated water from interfering with the soil it needs to transport oxygen to this soil and it needs to release the gases that build up in there because otherwise the toxic gases we were talking about so it's anaerobic build up like nitrogen 
gas, nitrous oxide, hydrogen sulfide, all these gases build up in the sand and they'll just kill the plant roots. So we need these gases to be getting out. And then the plants in the wall stab method are equally important. There's a lot there's a trend in the hobby at the moment where everyone's interested in um there's a trend in the hobby where everyone's using obligate emerging plants, which is plants that are typically grown out of water or they spend a lot of the time out of water. And the wall stab method works with truly aquatic plants. Now you get plants from hard water with lots of bicarbonates and calcium and magnesium in, which they can use the carbons in the bicarbonates rather than needing CO2. They can use that when there's limited CO2 in the water. So they can carry on respiring and growing. But they'll just lower your KH. So as I say, when you do a water change or you top it up, if you add these minerals back to the water, the bicarbonates, you're just replenishing them. Also, the plants use the calcium as well. So you're replenishing these things. And I'm going to make a video on how to create these things. And then also we have the aerial advantage because these have got access to atmospheric CO2. They're absorbing excess macronutrients out of the water and they're converting it into plants, which you can literally just scoop off the surface. And you want to, and you want to add as much plant growth as you can. You want to add as many plants as you can to your tank because the plants are absorbing all the macronutrients. So they're all competing the algaes. For these nutrients and then the algae can't get a grip well sometimes you get bits of algae in there but the important thing is that it's gonna the plants are gonna out compete it especially the early advantage where they're pulling all the micronutrients they're pulling all the macronutrients out of the water it's creating a low nutrient environment in the water column most of the nutrients are down here like i've discussed so that's the whole theory behind what we're doing with the wall stab method or the naturally planted aquarium. I've explained all the theory of what we're trying to achieve. Now, how do we go about setting up the tank? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to add one inch of soil or we can add two inches of soil. If the plant roots in the aquarium are bigger, we add them in. And then what we do with this is we cap it with either one inch of gravel or half to three quarters of an inch of sand. Now I've never been a fan of sand because of the reasons why I've explained to you. Plus, with sand, the detritus and mould can sit on the top and the algae, it's releasing ammonia on the surface of the sand. And um, this ammonia, algae will just simply just grow in it or cyanobacteria and it'll just consume the algae. Uh, the algae will consume the ammonium at the source and the other nutrients. Then we've set this up, the cap, then we want to plant our plants in it. But rather than using a lot of stem plants, stuff like that, stuff that they grow quickly and they need highlights, we tend to associate them with liquid fertilization and CO2 injection. We want to use like the old school plants, big roof eating rosette plants which will get the roots down into the soil and they basically till, till the soil and they grow a network of roots right through the soil. They're leaking oxygen into the soil and they're just making it a really habitable place for roots to live. And then you've got the bacteria thriving in there. Mycelium is fungus, beneficial fungus that live in a symbiotic relationship with the root and just creates what's known as a really healthy rhizosphere for the plant roots. If there's no roots in that soil it's just not going to do what we need it to do so therefore you may as well just not put soil under that bit of the tank if you're not going to plant in it and that's that's how simple it is and you want to get as many different types of like plants in there as you can and if you want me to talk about top plants for the wall stab method let me know and i'll do a video on it but that's just a quick so that's my guide on the theory behind the wall stab method and how to set up an aquarium so that's my explanation of theory behind the wall stab method and 
how to set up a wall stab method aquarium. And you have to remember, you have to cycle this the way you'd cycle a normal aquarium because the when you first put the soil in water, terrestrial soil, it goes through a process of mineralization for six weeks. And this process of mineralization releases ammonia into the water column, which obviously the beneficial bacteria have to turn into nitrite and nitrate. And you have to treat it the same as you would any other aquarium. And then after this, we basically bypass nitrogen cycling because we're nutrient cycling the, as the ammonia is released it's absorbed by the plants it's used as fertilizer and that's the whole concept behind a wall stab method now people latch on to the no water change side of things now i still do water changes regularly and remember diana wallstad in her book says she water changes she says she water changes 25 liters of water in a 180 liter tank every month and she tops up about 15 liters and she uses this as an opportunity to dose calcium magnesium and bicarbs into the water all the minerals which are macronutrients and for me that that's not the only selling point the fact that we're not relying as much on water changes it's the simplicity of it and it's the fact that as your water matures it's kind of like a mother the sourdough mother you know you mother starter where as it matures it adds more and more flavor to your sourdough bread with the wall stab method the water as it matures it gets all these organic carbons in them which compounds which they have antibacterial properties in them and they also if any heavy metals like in my area at the moment there's a lot of strange things going on with the water and people are losing plants now that one of them it could be metal toxicity because there's heavy metals in the water now when you've got those organic compounds docks they're called dissolved organic compounds in the water they, they turn the water quite cloudy and sort of like tannins like a yellow tea color now when you've got them in the water they will bind with the heavy metals and then once they bind with the heavy metals the plants can absorb them so the plants literally purify the water because of these and it just makes it just gives you such a higher level of protection i'll say the the reason why i'm the main reason why i'm getting more and more into the wall slab method is because I want my own unique way of keeping fish. Um, for the life of me, I can't find that many people who are actually practicing the wall stab method. They're practicing things that they consider similar to the wall stab method. However, when you actually look at the wall stab method, there isn't any other method where the whole tank is set up around nutrient cycle, about converting fish wastes and foods into nutrients for the plants which then obviously I talked about the docks it creates a healthy and healthy environment for the fish and that's part of the thing and I want to get types of fish that I are unique that there isn't many other people in the hobby keeping and what kind of creates a whole philosophy around that so it's unique to me I want to be doing something that no one else is doing and that's my whole goal around it and I want to set more and more of these tanks up and learn more and more about them obviously I've got a good grasp of the grasp of the basics but knowing the theory and putting it into practice are different aren't they so that's my goal over the next few years maybe